Mauro Bilinho, a brilliant researcher, a scientist, a best-selling author worldwide. I adore you. It's a honor for me to ask you a few questions. The first one, how did your adventure and research begin? Uh, first of all, thank you for your <laughs> words for me. I started as a translator for the biggest uh, Catholic house publishing of the Vatican in Italy. After many years, I started to uh, write my books in which I uh, write what is really written in the Bible. And in this moment, um, I started to talk with uh, the people, with the public, saying uh, what is really written in, in the Bible. But that's exactly my second question. What does the Bible actually talk about? Actually, <laughs> I need to say, first of all, that uh, the Bible doesn't speak about God. The Bible speaks about uh, uh, beings named Elohim that uh, are uh, normal beings uh, with knowledge, uh, with uh, advanced uh, technology, superior in front of the knowledge of the human being. And they also made, with uh, genetic engineering, made uh, the Homo sapiens. Okay. And so we are songs. I understand this perfectly. Yeah. So. What does the glory of God mean? The glory of God is a mistaken translation because the glory of God is one of the flying machines used by Yahweh particularly and is one of the flying machines because uh, there are more than 20 kinds of flying machines in the Bible and in the Apocrypha. Uh, the other, for example, are Ruach, are Cherubim, are Merhava, are Ephod, and Kavod not only is uh, a flying machine, but it's a weapon, a um, battle armament, as, uh, uh, for example, says uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Benner, who is uh, the president of the ancient Hebrew uh, study center. So we can say that uh, these Elohim were flying on uh, technology advanced objects. So you think in the Bible they are also speaking of extraterrestrials? It's possible. It's possible. Also, if uh, the, the Bible is not uh, clear about that topic. Okay, now. It's not clear, but the description allows uh, us to think it. Now, in the Bible, we find fascinating stories. For example, the story about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. What was that destruction? Who that, made it? This destruction was one of the war fought between the groups of Elohim that uh, fought uh, one each other for power, for power on the territory and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed using uh, weapons that uh, led us to think an atomic energy. So, you know, this is all fascinating new knowledge. How will you bring your new knowledge into the public. You know, you have to change the spirit of time. Oh, yes. <laughs> this concept is for me uh, important. I know it's important for you, the zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, yeah. <laughs> I agree totally with you. I agree totally. I think not only it's uh, possible, I think it's uh, now changing and I think we have to work to achieve this object. Mauro Bilio, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for your answers. Thank you to you, Eric. Thank you to you.
I'm very, very pleased to be with a, a true legend, true living legend, Eric von Daniken, with whom we are starting a collaboration. Yes. Uh, considering that uh, we both have uh, at heart the zeitgeist, the spirit of time that I'm sure is really changing today. By the way, I have a question to, to ask you. The first is about the Antarctic continent. I think this continent will reserve us in the future big surprises. Can you tell us something about this? The Antarctica was always a mystery. First, we all know that some few hundred years in the 15th century, there was a map found called the Piri Rice okay. map. They found it at Topkapi Palace in, in Turkey. And on this map, the coastline of the Antarctica is engraved. Now at that time, the Antarctica was covered by ice. Okay. No one knew the Antarctica. So where did the information come from? An ice-free Antarctica. Antarctica is a mystery. Some thousand or 10,000 of years ago, it must have been not only free of ice, there must have been some sort of civilization there. Now today, we have a lot of discussions. We have in information from uh, Linda Moulton Ho. She's a brilliant researcher, a brilliant writer, and she was in contact with high American militaries. And these high American militaries told, told her that in the Antarctica today, there is a secret base where humans work together with extraterrestrials. In Antarctica. Yes, in Antarctica. And I believe this is quite possible. You know, humanity of today doesn't know everything. We are not informed about everything. Slowly and slowly, the truth comes to the surface. And I'm sure we will find a real secret in the Antarctica. Slowly, slowly, with biblical patience. <laughs> yes, actually. But the second question is about Nazca. I think you are the foremost expert in the world of this archaeological site. But the documentaries show always only images of animals, insects. But I know, but you know that Nazca is more than that. Really? Moro. Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like to tell us something about? I was in Nazca. This is a stupendous uh, no, site. No. I was in Nazca at least 30 times. In the beginning, there was a German lady. Her name was Maria Reicher. She did the first research about Nazca. She came from Germany, from the, from the uh, city of Dresden. I met her in Nazca. And she said, this is a mystery. Seen from the air, it looks like an airport. She never okay. said it is an airport. It looks like an airport with airstrips and so on. And in fact, whenever I made photos of Nazca, first you have these figures, figures of fishes, monkeys, humans, all kinds of figures. But these figures are small. The biggest one is about 32 meters long. What they never talk on TV documentations are the lines of Nazca. And some of these lines are gigantic. These lines look like airstrips. They start abruptly, they end abruptly. Okay. The longest of the large is 3.8 kilometers long. And then are small lines too. You see, you have to separate between large lines looking like airstrips and small lines, which are just about one meter large. The longest of these small lines is 28 kilometers long. 28, 28. kilometers. Do you know crossing strike crossing over hills and mountains? Fantastic. So in public, our scientific documentaries, they always show the figures. They never show the lines. And this nerves me. It's not honest. The, the public are not shown the truth. The real mystery of Nazca are the big lines looking like airstrips. And this is what must go finally to the head of the public. Okay, but uh, there are uh, also uh, mountain scats. Yeah, exactly. There is one mountain which is made flat artificially. Definitely. You can prove it because all the mountains around, they come from both sides to the mountain okay. top. From left to right. 
Then you have one mountain in the middle, which was artificially made flat. And there is something like an airstrip. And under the airstrip, you see a zigzag line. Also, this picture with that flat made mountains is never shown to the public. The public would say, hey, what's that? And obviously, they don't want that the public sees the truth. Yes. Natska is still a big mystery. Oh, yes, 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 because it's so difficult to explain for, for the traditional theories. They have no reasonable answer. Uh, traditional archaeologists, they are wonderful and intelligent personalities. I love them, but they all work from a psychological point of view. We have to look at this in a psychological view or in a religious point of view. Yes, they never look at it for the we reality. We can say they are dogmatic. They are dogmatic in maybe, their sense. Maybe, maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometime. <laughs> so the reality are the facts and not the psychological interpretations. Okay. The third question is about Mayan calendar. We know about Mayan calendar because of 2012 famously misinterpreted doomsday prophecy. But I, I know that you know that this calendar tells us about extraordinary events that uh, um, happened in the humankind's distant history. Yeah, you Can you tell us uh, uh, about uh, this uh, stupendous uh, story? Of course, first of all, Maya never told about doomsday day. They simply, a calendar ends like our calendar, which ends on, on, on December 31st. Our year ends, so a Maya period ends, and the next morning we have January 1st, okay. we, a new year's begin. In the Maya calendar, an epoch ends and a new epoch, a new counting happens. Now, with the Maya calendar, you can clearly prove that extraterrestrials were there. Why? Every culture in the world has a calendar. And the starting point of a calendar is for every culture very, very important. You do not just start a calendar like this. For example, we live in a Christian world. We have a Christian calendar. The starting point was important for the Christians the birth of Jesus Christ. The Muslim society live in other calendars. Yes, yes. Now, the starting point was because Mohammed went to, to Medina, something important for the Muslim society. The Jewish community has another calendar starting three and a half thousand BC. Why? Because at their believing that the world was created. Now, the Maya had a starting point too. The Maya calendar starts on August 11th, 3114 BC. Why? What was so important for the Maya? They tell it. They have it handed down. It was the day when the gods from the streets of the stars yes. descended to the human. Yes. That was the day why they started. That was the reason why they started their calendar. And important. Uh, absolutely important. And they proved it in their buildings. You see, their buildings, are, they represent the descending of the gods. For example, the Maya pyramid in Chichen Itza. Okay. You clearly can see how God descends in light and shadow, light and shadow, light and shadow, every year in the beginning of spring. So the situation is absolutely clear. And it's time that our scientific community starts to think, at least in this way. By the way, just our scientists, they are all brilliant people. They are not stupid. They are honest people. But simply, they were not interested in the subject. No, 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 they yes. said, we have no time for this. This is nonsense. That's true. They have to yes. change. Again, the spirit of time. Zeitgeist. That zeitgeist <laughs> has to change. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Also in the Bible, there is, uh, there is a name of one of the patriarch, Yared, whose name uh, derives from a verb, Yared, that means uh, a, a great a big descent from the sky, and uh, this uh, descent is uh, included in this name, Yared, ah, okay. that was one of the patriarch of the Bible. So this is a, a situation that uh, we can find all around the world. So, Mauro, you are a brilliant man. You know a lot. You have made your own translations. I know you know the Hebrew language. You can speak Sumerian. You can understand that it's Sumerian. It's a pleasure to talk to you. 
Thank you, Mauro, for it's all... It's a pleasure to work to you. <laughs> Thank you for all this information. And the community has to change. Yes, of course. The community has to change.